Welcome back to the Hammer Olympic Amphitheater, getting ready for the men's free skate. Before the Winter Olympics, everyone said and predicted Victor Petrenko, Brian Boitano, Kurt Browning, those three would make it to the medal podium, they said. But anybody who said that was wrong. Two nights ago, in a night of monumental upsets, they didn't skate the performances of their lives. No reinstated pros have a chance for medals. The veterans are out of it. This is a competition for the young warriors. Names like Davis, Ermanov, Candeloro, and Stoiko. It's showtime in Hammer. We'll show you the final flights, two flights of six skaters each. We will see Kurt Browning, Sebastian Britton, Victor Petrenko, Eric Milo, Brian Boitano will skate first in that final selection. And then the final flight, Elvis Stoiko, a chance for a gold medal, Philippe Candeloro, Scott Davis, also in the hunt, and Alexei Ermanov, who is the leader after the technical program. But as we saw the other night, anything can happen in men's figure skating. Hang on, folks. We'll be back to the Olympic Amphitheater. It's showtime in the men's figure skating world. Twelve skaters to come. Brian Boitano will skate first of the United States, and maybe the tone for this evening has already been sent, and the message sent by one of the lower-ranked skaters who has already skated today. Min Zhang of China successfully landed a quadruple jump here earlier. Now, I wonder if that just helps Elvis Stoiko and boost his confidence, because Stoiko doesn't really need the quadruple jump in his program to win a gold medal, but he says he will try it. He does it in combination with a triple jump afterwards. But that's Elvis, the mindset of a motocrosser, martial artist, and maybe tonight, an Olympic champion. works is I keep pushing my limits that's the way I go about things I push the limit every so often and keep pushing Elvis Stoiko unlimited doesn't matter if it's written down in a book that a triple axel will never be done okay I'll try to push the book and say I can do that I know it can be done and it would just push it, quad toe, double toe. And I went, okay, if I can do that, I should be able to stick a triple on the end of it. Or if I can do a triple lutz, I've heard some people try and quad lutzes, I can do that. I know I can do it. It's all in the mindset. Never set a limit on yourself, because once you do that, you don't really know how far you can go. And if you do, maybe there is no limit. Maybe if your mind is tough enough, if you push hard enough. Martial arts, I've done that since I was 10. It's a matter of always just getting more powerful. Um, not only body, but the mind. So it sets, you can control your mind and you can bend anything to your will. Strengthen will, push the limit, find the rush. Exhilarating, liberating. When I'm riding, it's a matter of just being free in a car, it's restrictive, but out there, there's no one out there. It's just me, the trail, and the bike. And I can go as fast as the bike uh, goes, and I'll go as fast as, as long as I'm safe and I know what I'm doing. And, and it's a lot of fun. It's just, it's just a cool thing to do. It's just adrenaline rush when you're out there riding. 
But if I didn't skate, I'd probably be riding dirt bikes and probably be racing. It's just the competitive instinct I've had in myself. Competitive instinct. A self-evaluation. Personally, ridiculously, overly competitive about everything I do. You know, that's part of it. Sometimes it drives me up the wall when I'm skating, and I'm like, oh, I want this so bad. But that's what you need, and, and, and that's what drives you. And if, if you don't have that, those days that it's tough become even tougher if you don't have that bite inside you. A fire burns within, intense, and need to push harder, further than anyone to look ahead with vision. The sky is the limit, and like I said, I don't put any limits on myself, and once I let, let go of those limits, take off the chains, just be free, and just be that free-floating energy spirit, you know, you could say, it's... Anything's possible if you put your mind to it. The Unlimited, Elvis Stoiko. Theater, and man, it's here at last. The men's free skate final worth two-thirds of the total mark for men's competition. Brian, the question that is on my mind is can these youngsters that are up at the top, can they stand the charge that's coming up from the more experienced veterans? Well, this is a question that's on on everybody's mind right now, and it's been interesting and very unpredictable, this event, because the ones who had all of the focus, all of the spotlight, like Boitano and Browning and Petrenko, find themselves below seventh place. And the other ones who have been overlooked all season long have slipped through the crack. They're now sitting in one and three. Everybody was counting on Stoiko. He's in second right now. And it's been a tremendous event. There's a little bit of history that we need to tell our viewers about. Well, watch for Elvis Stoiko's program. He's trying the most difficult jump combination ever attempted. It's a quadruple toe, triple toe combination, never been done before, so that's making history. Also, if he wins tonight, he will be the first Canadian man to ever win Olympic gold in figure skating. And the question, I guess, on everybody's mind is just how far can Kurt Browning climb? He's like a different skater today. The support coming in from Canada, some 700 pieces of mail. The men's free skate final, very soon. Canada goes for gold tonight, Elvis Stoiko. Everyone across the country watching back home, and it will be interesting to see how Sebastian Britton comes out, too, because the Broussard Quebec native skating in his first Olympics will skate behind Kurt Browning. How will Kurt Browning react to what happened the other night, an earth-shattering experience? He has no chance for a medal. He's out of the race, but he is still Kurt. He still is motivated, and he still is very deeply embedded in a country's heart. It's a love affair that no matter what happens will never be unplugged. Kurt Browning now in this Olympic portrait. There's a, a certain sense of confidence and a certain sense of responsibility that comes with those words and now skating for Canada you um, the, you get the confidence from all the people who have skated to those words before you um, like Brian Orser and Tyler Crest and those guys they've set up a certain level of expectation for you and they've also they've also given the world respect for your country before you even step on the ice it can work to your advantage but the level of expectation that they've set up for you is also incredible and uh, the two, unfortunately, go hand in hand. The confidence that's already there waiting for you and uh, the high level of expectation that's already there waiting for you, basically. You can't have one without the other. There's certain moments in my skating, though, every once in a while where I do step on the ice and there's good music and my friend's on the ice. Maybe, we, maybe we're, we have a good party to go to afterwards and you can capture that feeling that 
you know, you're just a kid and nothing matters. You skate down the ice and you're smiling and you're laughing, you still perform the, the difficult jump. If you have a bit of that when you're competing, people can pick up on it and it and it's exponential, it grows. You don't really need to be too flippant. Um, but I think that there should be just a, a sense of curiosity as to, is he really working or is he having fun out there? And uh, if you can work those two together, that's magic. When I think about my career or my life, um, the Olympic gold or a medal or whatever, it just doesn't really figure in. Not after what happened in Albertville. Um, I'm pretty sure that considering what happened in Albertville, I've done really well. That um, mentally that I've, I'm settled, that it didn't really take a big, huge slash out of my career. Um, I'm still positive about skating. And uh, I don't really need that Olympic medal to be happy. It's not missing. But it's there, and it's waiting. And so I don't see any reason why I don't want to go get it. I've always had that attitude. I've never really thought, I need this to be happy. If I don't win this, I'll be a mess. It's never been that. I don't see why I should start now. I don't think that I have the right to feel that I need anything else to be complete. I don't have that right. Not when I do a muscular dystrophy telethon every year and I meet families that are losing their children. I meet kids that have never walked. I meet people in hospitals that are terminal in six months. What gives me the right with my career and the people that love me and the fun that I've done, the TV shows I've made, different countries I've traveled to? Like, I'm not being a martyr here, but I don't have the right to think I des deserve any more. But I like working hard, and, and like I said, there's more out there, so I like going for it. I don't want to abuse my talent. I don't want to take an opportunity and waste it. I'm not that kind of person. But on the other hand, if it doesn't happen, you know, I'm not going to go and wimp out for six months feeling sorry for myself. I'm going to party that night because life's too good. Well, this is the time in my life that, that um, quite possibly won't be duplicated again, like the, uh, the excitement, the, um, the pressure, the expectations, just the basic knowledge of um, stepping on the ice and the whole world is watching. And it could be the only moment where I've got everyone watching me. And if I could make everyone remember something just uh, to try and <laughs> do something that they wouldn't forget you, it doesn't seem possible. It seems like there's always going to be someone coming along. And um, it's the people that can do something great and then move on that I respect. It's um, Donald Jackson, who, uh, who is still as great today as he, as he was on film when he um, stunned the world. That's what I'd like to remember it as, as someone who um, did his thing and then went on, you know, who uh, still found something that was as challenging as skating and who is still respected 25 years after he was done. That's how I'd like to be remembered. For Cody, blind from birth, it's the joy of reading any book.